Hey, welcome back to my allotment. It's a beautiful early June evening. I finished work about an hour or so ago and I've come straight to the plot because something quite exciting and big in terms of a change and experiment is about to take place. Um, so today we're actually going to talk briefly about paths or you might pronounce it paths if you're from the Midlands and a bit further up north. So my allotment has wood chip paths and it always has done because it's low maintenance, it's cheap because it's completely free. We get a tree surgeon to drop some off here. You know, it's so easy to maintain, it rots down naturally and I used to top it up every nine to 12 months or so. Um, it would help keep the weeds down and it was, and it's been great, you know, I actually really love my wood chip paths. But it dawned on me the other day that if you've been watching my channel for a while, <laughs> you know that I've got a bit of a problem with red ants, red ants that bite you. And it's not just one or two nests. And I'm, I'm not saying this to get your advice on how to treat them. So please, you can reserve those comments in the, in the comments section. Um, because there's just that many, they're that widespread. And it dawned on me the other day that the source of the problem could actually be right under my feet here because I realised, well, it was when I was over at my dahlia borders that I mulched in the winter time with lots of thick wood chip. And I saw ants nests in there and I hadn't seen them in there before. And the ant situation is actually getting a lot better in other areas of my allotment where I haven't mulched my paths in, I don't know, probably about a year now. So the wood chip that is here is decomposed and it's mostly bare soil and a few weeds here now. So it, it kind of dawned on me, is that the source of the problem? Is it the wood chip that's creating so many ant nests? And well, I was at work yesterday. I work at a plant nursery, if you don't know, and we've got a lot of rolls of turf going cheap. and. I just suddenly had this realization, well, what if my paths weren't wood chip anymore and they were grass? So this is what I'm going to be doing tonight and I'm going to be changing some of my paths to grass. Now, you know, each path type has its benefits and its drawbacks. You know, wood chip is so incredibly light and easy to move. And I say, as I say, it's free. And you look at grass, it's nice and green, it's bright, it feels nicer under your foot. Um, obviously it's quite cheap to seed. I'm gonna do it by turf, which is usually more expensive, but I'm getting a good a bit of a bargain. But the big drawback of grass is that it needs maintaining, obviously. You need to trim it, you might want to edge it. Now, obviously this is my allotment, it's not a formal garden, so I'm not gonna be getting the lawnmower on it doing a number one clip every three days. Um, but I do have a strimmer, which is fairly new, and that's what I'll be using to keep it in shape. And um, so yes, it's gonna look completely different. In fact, I've already done one pathway over there, and I can't believe how formal it suddenly made my plot because of this straight green line going through it. And as much as I, I like a straight line and I like neat edges and things, it's not really my sort of allotment style. As you know, it's quite loose, quite relaxed. So um, it's going to be interesting and it's more of an experiment really just to see, you know, does this improve my red ant situation? Because, you know, all of this wood chip everywhere, if that's what they like, then I've just got a massive habitat for them right here. So if you're an entomologist and you know about the British red ants, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this situation. Um, and if you've got any experience with red ants and wood chip, please do chip in in the comments. <laughs> Excuse the pun. Um, but yes, apparently we do have a few different types of red ant in the UK. One of them is a wood ant, which would make sense. Um, but the ones I have here are just incredibly aggressive and they really do sting when they bite you. So if I can try and control that by, you know, removing that habitat for them, fingers crossed, I might have a more comfortable, relaxing time here when I'm weeding and um, trying to relax and not having to stare at my feet all the time. So yeah, that's basically it. And um, I'm gonna go get some rolls of turf out of my car now and try and get them all down before sunset. <laughs> so the path that runs from my polytunnel down to the seating area is 
wood chips but it's degrading it's also got a lot of cooch grass that's popping up and this one ground elder which has a rather pretty leaf but it's really difficult to get rid of so i'm going to put a stretch down this pathway and see how it does one of the other things that I've done so far to help reduce the populations of red ants is to move a lot of these rocks that I had that were edging my borders. It looked lovely, but they were nesting underneath it. And um, so I've moved quite a lot of them away from my borders now so that they don't have anywhere to nest. We've also got this area here, which is all very heavily wood chipped. So there's, if I do the whole lot, there is a lot to do. Another benefit of laying down a turf pathway is that you can use it to suppress any nasty weeds that you have. And I've decided to stretch some turf across this little path here because I've got quite a problem with bindweed. And by using grass to smother the bindweed and smother the roots of the bindweed, you know, this turf is now going to sink its roots into the soil and outcompete the bindweed. And it probably will grow through the grass for a little while, but with regular strimming, it will slowly lose its vigor and hopefully kill it off. It may still pop up in the strawberry cages for a little while from time to time, but if I can help reduce its vigor along this path, then I'll be making a serious effort against the battle of the bindweed. So first of all, I raked away all of that wood chip to reveal the bare soil underneath, which I then weeded as I went along. And then I brought in some topsoil to even out the level of the ground as much as possible, because I realized later on it does actually dip quite a bit in the middle. So this evens it off, makes it nice and flat, and it also gives the roots of the turf something to sink into straight away and gives them off to a, a really good start. So I used the rake for this and used the back of it to sort of spread it out as best as I could and make it nice and flat. It was then just a case of bringing out the rolls of turf and then rolling them out, like rolling out a, a red carpet. <laughs> Um, so that bit was pretty straightforward, um, but you know, you do need to make sure that you're careful when you're laying turf. You don't want to go walking on it straight away and try and distribute your weight as evenly as possible. I could have used planks of wood, but I mean, this isn't a formal garden and I'm really not too bothered. So here I am just making sure that the edges of those two pieces are firmly connected and that they knit together quite nicely. They're not going to have a big gap in the middle and there's not going to be an obvious separation where there is no grass. I realised that this grass path is going to be a lot wider than what my wood chip path was currently, so hence me moving out all those rocks. And I did later realise that the dip in the path is actually a lot more than I thought, so I did have to go back again the following day to fill it up with a bit more of that topsoil. And when I pulled it back, I saw all these bugs and I couldn't believe it, how many worms were there after it had rained just hiding underneath the turf and it's going to be so interesting to see how this big change affects the insects on my plot. Am I going to get more slugs and snails, you know, quite possibly with this damper environment, but it's just going to be really interesting to see how it all plays out. <laughs> well, I've got a whole load of grass now that I can't walk on for a couple of weeks until it gets fully established and I'll be making sure that I keep it well watered, especially as it's going to be quite a hot week this one. Um, to make sure that the roots get down to the ground and it gets off to a good start. But I am so pleased and I can't believe just how different it's made the plot look. It's going to take a bit more maintenance, but I've got my strimmer that flips so I can do edges as well. And I may also buy an edging iron so I can keep it from spreading into my beds because I really don't want a solid um, edge running along it with wood or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's how it's gone. And um, let me show you around so you can have a look. So from this angle, you can see it comes all the way down just outside the shed and stops here. Um, I've probably got about a meter and a half from the shed door. And we've got a bit of a gap there, but that's absolutely fine. And it goes all the way up. And let me just hobble along this mud path at the side. 
Um, so it goes around there, as you saw earlier. Hopefully that will stop the bindweed and then it stops here. And I will perhaps fill out this bit when I get a few more rolls. But as I say, it's a bit more of an experiment than anything at the moment. And it goes all the way down here. Whoop, trying to fall over the cat. And that's where it stops. But look at that, look how different it is. It's so, so green. And it's gonna make such a difference to my plot in the winter months when everything is brown you know, there's no crops really around to brighten it up. And traditionally I'd have my wood chip, which was more brown, but at least come winter, I mean, it won't perhaps be quite as lush and green looking as it is now, but I will have some brightness and some greenery from the grass, which goes all the way along there. I do prefer it from the side angle where you can't see such straight edges. And over by the seating area, that grass is what I laid last year. And it's a bit patchy from where I've had the bench out, you know, how it extends to be a picnic table. Um, so that's why it's a little bit patchy, but I'm not too worried about that. And I've just filled it here. You can see where the rolls are to come up to this dahlia border. So I've extended that, which is going to be great because if it does help prevent the ants, I've got a much larger seating area for family and friends to come without me having to worry about them being bitten by the ants as well so there it is let me know what you think so there you have it that's my big change we will see how things go um, i'm going to be grateful for all of the grass clippings that i can put into my compost bin that's going to be an extra benefit and yeah we'll just see how this goes and i will keep you posted on the situation with the ants and you know how it grows how it does and um yeah, maybe I'll extend it even further to some of the other side side areas that I've not yet finished with the grass. So um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.